Hey physics people, welcome back to another one-dimensional kinematics problem. Okay, let's jump right in. A helicopter is ascending vertically with a speed of 5.25 meters per second. At a height of 130 meters above the earth, a package is dropped from a window. How much time does it take for the package to reach the ground? Hint, the package's initial speed equals the helicopter's. Okay, so like I say with every other problem, the first thing you wanna do is draw a picture. Okay, so hopefully you were saying that as I was saying it. Okay, so let's draw a picture. There's my ground. Okay, so I'm not gonna draw the helicopter and the package because it's the package we're really interested in here. I'm gonna just draw a square as the package and that package is ascending vertically. Okay, now at this point I wanna define my positive direction so I'm gonna let that be up. Now, if up is my positive direction, then the fact that the package is moving up vertically at 5.25 meters per second means that's a positive value because it's going in my positively defined direction. Okay, so I'm gonna say V naught equals 5.25 meters per second. Okay, um, we know that it's a height of 130 meters above the earth. That's this right here. Now, pay close attention to this part. You remember up is positive? When this package is dropped, it's gonna travel down. Okay, therefore it's traveling in the negative direction. It's gonna have a negative displacement, okay? So let's go ahead and write that. So D is actually minus 130. And here's the thing, if you don't actually put minus 130, you're going to get the incorrect answer. Okay, remember, whatever system you start from the beginning, maintain it until the end. Okay, we're asked to look for time that it takes to reach the ground. Now, there's one more piece of information missing. Something that's not explicitly given to you in the problem, but something that you should determine based on the scenario. Okay, you've got an object falling under gravity, in gravity alone. That means it's going to speed up. Specifically, it's going to speed up according to gravity, right? Acceleration due to gravity. So gravity, because it points down, is going to cause an acceleration of minus g. So therefore, minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, so at this point, you've got all your variables down. You have to come up with a kinematic formula that involves T, A, uh, D, sorry, D, A, T, and V naught. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the following formula. Let me just scroll up a bit there. So D equals V naught T plus one half acceleration times squared. All right, so let's go ahead and plug in our values. We've got minus 130 equals, oh, and that's in meters. Let's keep our units. V naught is 5.25 meters per second times T plus one half times negative 9.8 meters per second squared times T squared. Okay. So I'm just going to simplify this a little bit. I mean, clearly we can do the one half times negative 9.8, that's gonna give you minus 4.9. But I really want you to take a close look at this and notice something. Okay, this isn't like the previous formulas where you isolate for one variable, x equals blank or v equals blank. Okay, um, in this case, you've got a t here and you've got a t squared here. Okay, so now if that didn't automatically jump out of the page at you, then hopefully you start to recognize this as a special type of problem. Okay, so we've got a number in front of a t squared, a number in front of a t, and a number that has no t coefficient in front of it, right? Or no t letter, okay? Hopefully this should look to you like a quadratic equation, okay? And if it doesn't, you'll start getting used to seeing things like this with more practice. Okay, so as with any quadratic equation, I wanna write it in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Okay, so I'm gonna get my zero on the left, and I'm gonna go ahead and bring that, this part to the front, my t squared term. Okay, so negative 9.8 times a half is minus 4.9 meters per second squared. So that's my t squared term, plus 5.25 meters per second t, plus 130 meters. Okay, so at this point, I mean, it's a quadratic formula, right? That's what you have to use to solve it. You've got your first term, your second term, your third term, 
Okay, all it is is being able to plug it in to the quadratic formula accurately. Now, if you don't remember what the quadratic formula is, I highly suggest you try to remember the song. Okay, so if we call the first term connected to this A, and then we call the next term B and the last term C, okay, based on this formula, then the quadratic formula, and yes, I'm gonna sing it, so be ready. Okay. It's x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, hey, so thank you for, you know, putting up with that. My grade 10 math teacher sang that to me, and uh, I've never forgotten it. So as silly as it sounds, it's like those Bill Nye videos. You know, the music videos still teach you. So here we go. We don't have an x here. We've got a t. So t equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And that's it. You just plug in your values. Okay, so let's, I'm not going to plug in the units because I already know they're consistent with si. I'm not going to bother at this point. If you'd like to, you can. It's just going to get a little bit crowded. Okay, so let's plug in our numbers. Negative b is going to be negative of whatever is there. Minus 5.25 plus or minus the square root. If you square b, it's 5.25 squared minus, uh, pardon me, minus 4a is minus 4.9, c is 130, all over 2a, 2 times minus 4.9. Okay, and when you calculate this out, you're going to get two roots, right? Okay, it's going to be negative 5.25 plus this number divided by this number and negative 5.25 minus this number divided by this number, okay? So you're gonna get two answers, and when you actually work it out on your calculator, you're gonna find that the first answer is 40 over seven, okay, which you can simplify to 5.71 seconds. And the second answer, let me just uh, move this over a little bit. My second answer is gonna be negative 65 over 14, which is equal to minus 4.64 seconds. Now with any quadratic formula, because it's a power of two, you're gonna get two solutions. That's just the nature of the graph. Now it's up to you to decide which solution is correct, which one makes sense. Okay, so hopefully one of these solutions immediately jumps out of the page as not making sense. And if you chose that to be the negative time, you are correct. Okay, so you cross that out. Okay, we cannot, have, let me move this up again, cannot have negative time. And if you can, you should contact, uh, you know, some kind of uh, theoretical physics institute because you just figured out how to time travel. That'd be crazy. And I'd like to know how to do that too. <laughs> so your answer is going to be 5.71 seconds. Okay. And uh, there you have it. Okay. So that's how long it's going to take to reach the ground. Okay. So again, Draw a picture, set your positive direction, choose a formula that has all the variables you know except the one you're looking for, plugging it in, and solve for the unknown variable. And sometimes that might require you to use the quadratic formula. And if it does, don't be afraid. Just go ahead and plug it in. It's just math at this point, okay? Well, guys, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button, okay? And subscribe to Physics in the Flesh if you want to watch more videos and learn how to solve more problems. Okay, it was a pleasure, guys, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.